Welcome to a course on Test Your C Programming Skills, a guide to crack IT interview. We are starting second topic of this course that is storage classes and functions. There are four videos on this topic. This is the first out of that four. Let's get started with some key points. Storage class decides scope and lifetime of variables. Scope is helpful to determine portion of the program where variable is accessible, whereas the lifetime is a period during execution of the program in which a variable exists in the memory. There are four types of storage classes in C, namely auto, register, static, and extern. In this session, we'll discuss auto and register storage class in detail. The static and external storage class will be discussed in coming sessions. Auto storage class is a default storage class for local variables. The default value in this case is a garbage value. Scope of automatic variable or a local variable is limited to function or a block in which that variable is declared and lifetime of such variables equals to lifetime of function in which the variable is declared. In case of register storage class, a variable is stored in CPU register rather than main memory. This is useful when we want quick access to that variable, for example, counter variable which is frequently required so rather than storing it in the memory, if we are storing it in a CPU register, then we are able to access it faster. Here maximum size is equal to register size and we cannot apply address of operator on register variables as that content is not stored in the memory but in the register. Scope and lifetime of register variables is equal to automatic variable and default value is also garbage. Please note that declaring a variable as a register variable is a request to compiler and compiler may or may not grant that request. Let's discuss first program in this session. The program is shown on the slide. Please read program carefully and guess the output. In the program there are three variables P, Q, R of different storage classes and the value of these variables is displayed on the line number 9 using printf statement. And the correct answer is, it will display three values that is 0, 0 and garbage. Let's understand why this program is giving such output. Please note that here in the program, P is a global variable. Q is a static variable and R is a automatic or a local variable. Default value for global and static variable is always zero, whereas default value for automatic variable is unpredictable. That is garbage. Please note that sometimes you may observe that default value for local variable is zero or one in some cases, but it is really unpredictable. And though we are able to observe it as a 0 or a 1, if we are changing the compiler, if we are changing the environment, then we may get different output at a different time. So for local variables, the output is garbage, whereas for global and static variable, the output is 0. Let's move to the next program. Please see the code given on the screen, read carefully and guess the output. In the program, in the main function, there is a local variable p, then there is a call to function fun. In the function fun, one more local variable is declared at the line number 10. It is displaying the value of that local variable at line number 13. There is an inner block on line number 14 to 17 and in inner block also it is printing the value of p. So what will be the output of this program and the correct answer is P at line 13 is 101, P at line 16 is 200 
and p at line 7 is 101. So let's understand why we are getting this output. Please note that scope of a local variable is in the function or a block in which it is declared. In this program, variable p is declared thrice and all three variables are having different scope. On line number 5, variable p declared, the scope of that variable is in the main function. On line number 10, variable p is declared and that scope of the variable p on line number 10 is in the function fun and on line number 15 one more p is declared and the scope of that p is in the block starting from line number 14 to 17. Please note that at line number 13 p from fun function is referred and hence the value of p is 101. At line number 16 p from inner block is referred hence the value of p is 200 whereas at line number 7 p from main function is referred hence the value of p is 200. Let's move to the next example. Read the program carefully and guess the output. In the program there is a main function which is printing the value of p and calling another function fun and in the function fun there is a declaration of variable p and it is also displaying the value of variable p. So let's understand what will be the output of this program. An output is p at line 11 is 100 and p at line 7 is a 200. Let's understand why we are getting this output. Please note that there are two p variables in the program. At line number 3, there is a variable p which is a global variable and at line number 6, there is another variable p which is a local variable for fun function. In the main function, at line number 11, when we are trying to print the value of p, it refers to the globally declared p. Whereas, in fun function, variable p refers to the locally declared p and that's why the output is p at line number 11 is 100 and p at line number 7 is a 200. Let's move to the next example. Please read code carefully and guess the output of this code. In this program, in main function, a global variable p is incremented, then there is a call to function fun, then there is change in the value of p and then again call to the function fun and finally printing the value of p at line number 15. Function fun is also operating on the global variable p and changing its value to first p to 200 and then p plus plus. So let's understand what will be the output of this program. An output is at line number 15 it prints the value of p as a 201. Let's understand why we are getting this output. Please note that here fun function is called twice. Now whenever fun function is called, it is assigning the value 200 to global variable p and then it is incrementing that value by 1. So we will get the 201 as output when we are displaying the value of p at line number 15. So in the next part we will discuss storage classes and functions part 2. Till then enjoy C programming.